This morning on Wake Up With Hope, the parenting place is back, and we have a special health news feature from Go Healthy For Good. Plus, we'll have more music, and Faith For Today will share a devotion with us. Good morning. It's a bright new morning here on Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for waking up with us here today. Yes, we are excited to be here and happy for another day. How's your day going this spring morning? What is the weather like where you are? Write to us on Facebook. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We sure would. Well, on today's program, The Parenting Place is back. And we have a special health news feature from Go Healthy For Good. Plus, we'll have more music and faith for today. We'll share a devotional thought with us. So let's get started with this day in history. On this day in history, in the year 1889, the Eiffel Tower officially opened during a Paris ceremony led by Gustave Eiffel, the designer of the tower. The tower was built to honor the centenary of the French Revolution. The Eiffel Tower, one of the world's premier tourist attractions, is an open lattice wrought iron, 984 feet tall colossal structure. It's supported on four masonry piers from which rise four columns that unite to form a single vertical tower. There are three platforms with an observation deck and glass cage elevators ascend the piers on a curve. The Eiffel Tower is unreasonably an iconic building. Its features are simply amazing. Yes, they are. We have a special story there, don't we? We do. A very special place because it was there that Heidi and I celebrated our honeymoon. Yes. Oh, that was uh, such a memorable place to celebrate it. Beautiful. But did you know that the Bible describes a city that is beyond comparison? It's called the New Jerusalem. Travel with me to chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. There it describes the New Jerusalem as a perfectly squared city that is 375 miles long on each side. Wow, it's going to be amazing. That wall around that city is made up of solid jasper with a radiance and beauty beyond description and is almost 20 stories high. It has 12 gates, which are 12 pearls. Each gate is made up of a single pearl. Can wow, you imagine? and there's a river that flows from the throne of God. The city has 12 full, complete foundations, each one made of a different precious stone. And every color of the rainbow is represented so that at a distance, the city will appear as upon resting on a rainbow. There is a tree of life there. The streets are of pure gold, transparent like glass. And the city will be lighted with the glory of God. Now that is what I call simply amazing. Amen. We can hardly picture it because we have never seen such a thing. Nothing on earth even comes close. And of course, we can't forget that Jesus will be there and nothing will be harmed. All pain and tears will be wiped away forever. The New Jerusalem is the city prepared for those who have accepted the great sacrifice of Jesus and have accepted his peace and love. My friends, we can't wait to meet you there. Amen. Many of us can agree that listening is so much harder than talking. Yet, being able to listen to our children is such an important skill to have as a parent. The Parenting Place is here this morning to teach us how we can succeed at being reflective listeners. It's good to listen a eh? hard though. I always want to butt in with my advice or solutions. I just want to comment on what someone's telling me. Yeah, no, no, I, I remember the time when I... You know, sometimes I just need to learn to shut up. Hey, boy, what's wrong with you? Oi, 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 hang on. Some phrases and tones will shut kids down straight away. Now, come on, let's try it again, Chief. Hey, son, you're looking a bit sad, mate. Yeah, much better. Leaning in, bit of eye contact. It's all good. You okay, mate? It's their stupid teacher. She picks on me all the time. Mrs. Brown's not stupid. And if she's picking on you, she's picking on you for a reason. So obviously, you've done something wrong. Yeah, good one, bro. 
That's gonna gently draw the problem out, isn't it? It's that stupid teacher. She picks on me all the time. So you're feeling a bit picked on? Well, I was printing my project and she told me to hurry up and sit down because you should have finished that last period. Well, if you should have finished it last period, why didn't you finish it last period? See, that's the problem, boy. You need to be a little bit more organised. Hey, 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 careful, bro. Well, I was printing my project and she told me to hurry up and sit down because you should have finished that last period. You must have felt a bit stinky. Well, it wasn't that bad because a whole lot of people in our class didn't finish it all. <laughs> uh. I might do my next project here at home then. Good idea. Anything to eat? Bro, let's go and raid the fridge. See? The kid's got a good brain. And after they've cleared the emotion out, they can start using it. But if you pile in there with accusations and blame, then their brains just jam up with emotion. Reflective listening. A great skill you can use in just about every relationship. Unless, of course, you work as a bouncer. Well, friends, we have more in store today, but we have to take a quick break. When we return, Go Healthy for Good has special health tips for us. Then Faith for Today will be sharing a devotional blessing with us. Up next, Doctor's Orders. Hi, honey, I'm home. Hi, honey. What did you do to my car? Well, I was driving in the snow and there's all the salt on the road and it just got all over the car. But if you go in and get cleaning materials, I'll wash your car for you. Really? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, great. Here you go, I got something. Apple juice to yeah. wash the car? Well, it says freshly pressed apple juice, 100% juice, no added sugar, and it's made in the United States of America. Don't you know that all the sugar naturally occurring in there is going to make a sticky mess on your car? Oh, but there's no added sugar. Well, this is naturally occurring sugar. Oh. So you just go back there and get something proper for me. Okay. Here you go. Oh, that's much better. Water's much better, but do you think this little bit of water's gonna wash this big old car? Well, we can try. Oh. We'll start with the window. <sighs> All right. Okay, you ready? <sighs> Some things husbands have to put up with here. I know, I know. Here. Hey, honey, this looks great now. I don't think so. No? No. Come oh. and take a look. Okay. Oh, you're right. Now you get in there and you get the right quantity of water for me. All righty. Oh, that's much better, much, much better. Okay. Thank you for that. Now stand back there. All right. You know, many people think that they can drink caffeinated drinks, tea, coffee, and juice all day, and that will be sufficient fluid for them. Well, you know, the problem with that is that caffeinated drinks actually suck the water out of your system and the fruit juice has too much sugar, so it'd be much better just to drink plain water. That's right, and water is a good cleansing agent. Fruit juice, tea, coffee, they're not going to clean you. And but you know, the other problem is, is that thirst is not a good indicator because people don't drink enough if they just go by thirst. That's right, you need to drink at least a third more, so it's better to drink by volume. And let's say, have a bottle and drink several bottles a day or six to eight glasses of water. So here you go, doctor's orders. Well, I'll drink to that, Doc. Mmm, that's mighty good stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. As promised, we have a special health tips segment from our friend, Dr. Nerida McKibben from Go Healthy For Good. 
Dr. McKibben is a New Zealand born doctor with her own practice and program here on Hope Channel called Go Healthy for Good. She loves helping others and incorporating holistic health principles into her practice. Thousands of years ago, these large, starchy, sweet-tasting roots found their way all over the world. They were recognized to be highly nutritious and so became a staple part of the diet for many people groups around the globe because they store well without refrigeration. In fact, they become bitter in the refrigerator. The plants are frost sensitive and instead thrive in moist, temperate climates. These roots come in different colors, yellow, orange, red, brown, purple, and beige. And the darker colors are softer and moister. These earthy covers give us a clue as to one important nutrient, and that's beta carotene. Just four ounces of sweet potato or kumara contains the recommended daily allowance of vitamin A, which is a powerful antioxidant that boosts the immune system and slows aging. They're better than potatoes for glucose control for diabetes, and a great way to eat them is to combine them with carrots and red lentils for a hearty, nutritious winter soup. You can simply cut them into half inch slices and steam them for about 10 minutes. Bon appétit. And now it's time for the Good Food Kitchen. Renowned chef Jeremy Dixon joins us to share a delightful spring recipe for collie broccoli rice. Here is an energizing cauliflower and broccoli rice. And this is a great alternative to normal rice that you can have in a salad or under a stir fry or a curry. And we're gonna chop this up and we're gonna put it into the food processor. Just chop it up roughly. So once that's done, we just pour it into a pan. And we'll start that on with a touch of olive oil. and then we'll do the cauliflower. And so you end up with these beautiful rice-sized pieces of vegetables. Add a bit of salt, add a little bit of lime juice. When that's done for a couple of minutes, we'll just pour it into a serving dish. And there you have a great alternative to rice, will go amazing under any curry. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 58 says, O Lord, Thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul, Thou hast redeemed my life. This morning, Fountain View Academy will be singing the beautiful lyrics to the song titled Redeemed. We hope you're blessed. No language my rapture can tell I know that the light of His presence With me doth continually dwell Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed how I love to proclaim it His child and forever I am I think of 
blessed Redeemer. I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. His love is the theme of my song. His love is the theme of my song. Redeem. Well, we now have to take a short break, but stay with us. After the break, we will have today's devotional thought by Faith for Today. Don't go anywhere. Wake Up With Hope. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for staying with us. And it's now time for our devotional thought. This morning, it will be brought to us by Faith for Today. A young soldier and his commanding officer got onto a train together. The only available seats were across from an attractive young woman who was traveling with her grandmother. As they engaged in pleasant conversation, the soldier and the young woman kept eyeing one another. The attraction was obviously mutual. Suddenly, the train went into a tunnel and the car became pitch black. Immediately, two sounds were heard, the smack of a kiss and the whack of a slap across the face. The grandmother thought, I can't believe he kissed my granddaughter, but I'm glad she gave him a slap that he deserved. The commanding officer thought, I don't blame the boy for kissing that girl, but it's a shame that she missed his face and hit me instead. The young girl thought, I'm glad he kissed me, but I wish my grandmother hadn't slapped him for doing it. And as the train broke into the sunlight, the soldier could not wipe the smile off his face. He had just seized the opportunity to kiss a pretty girl and slap his commanding officer and had gotten away with both. Now, some of the goals we all have are to seize the day, to live in the moment, and to not let worries keep us from living joy-filled lives. But worries seem to plague most of our waking moments. Jesus understood that worry about the things of life could undo a disciple's career. So Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Those who chose to be on the road with Jesus necessarily lived on the edge in respect to their food and clothing. If a disciple worried about breakfast, and then when breakfast was provided, thought, whew, that's over, now where will my lunch come from? That disciple would soon become neutralized and spiritually ineffective. There's a broad application of this truth to today's culture because modern culture is neurotic about food and drink and clothing. TV ads feed our neuroses with alluring images of skinny people downing chips and burgers and sodas. Every product imaginable for the body is promoted how to tan it, slim it, pamper it, clothe it, drug it, and stimulate it. Today's marketing seems to be addressing worries that we didn't even know we had. But Jesus commands us not to worry about life. Life is more than a good meal and a new outfit. And it's certainly more than worrying about these things. But it feels almost impossible to not worry, doesn't it? Perhaps that's why Jesus didn't stop with these two illustrations. He continues by saying, consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, 
Why do you worry about the rest? The ravens and their little brothers, the crows, were and are everywhere in every nation of the world. They are, in fact, scavengers, and in biblical times, they were considered unclean. These insolent, squawking birds know nothing of the prudent habits of a farmer, and yet God feeds them. This doesn't mean that Jesus' followers are not to work, for in other places in Scripture, it speaks about animals as an example of hard workers. Jesus was merely holding up a common bird that lives according to its God-given capabilities and function and showing that God provides for it. We don't have to worry about the basic things as long as we remember God and where we are going along with him. Albert Einstein was traveling from Princeton on a train. When the conductor came down the aisle punching tickets, Einstein reached in his vest pocket. He couldn't find his ticket, so he reached in his trouser pockets. It wasn't there, so he looked in his briefcase, but still he couldn't find it. He looked in the seat next to him, but it wasn't there either. The conductor kindly said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. The conductor then continued on his way, punching tickets. Just before he went to the next car, he turned around and saw the great scientist on his hands and knees looking under his seat for the ticket. The conductor rushed back and said, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. No problem, you don't need a ticket. Einstein said, young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I am going. <laughs> now this is a funny story, but the truth is, all of our worries can vanish if we seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. That's when the glory of God's destination will outshine all of our worries. Freed from our worry and fretting over material things, what are you going to do? Set up one goal and accomplish it? Be part of God's kingdom? Do the work he gives you to do? Concentrate on being God's instruments to establish his kingdom here on earth? As he provided for the mission of the 12, so he will provide for you. Surrender your fear. Don't let anxiety rule your life. Trust the Father. The delight of his life is to find ways to give not only just daily needs, but his whole kingdom to you. Us kingdom heirs don't have to worry about the small stuff. Worry projects the worst. The worrier is perpetually going unfed and unclothed. Worry loads the present with the weight of the future. And when you load the troubles that you are anticipating upon the troubles you are presently experiencing, you give yourself an impossible burden. As George MacDonald wisely put it, no man ever sank under the burdens of the day. It is when tomorrow's burden is added to the burden of today that the weight is more than a man can bear. Jesus said just that in his summary statement of the parallel passage in Matthew. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. A woman who had lived long enough to have learned some important truths about life remarked, I've had a lot of trouble, most of which never happened. She had worried about many things that had never occurred and had come to see the total futility of her anxieties. A submarine was being tested and had to remain submerged for many hours. When it returned to the harbor, the captain was asked, how did the terrible storm last night affect you? The officer looked at him in surprise and exclaimed, Storm? We didn't even know that there was one. The sub had been so far beneath the surface that it had reached the area known to sailors as the cushion of the sea. Although the ocean may be whipped into huge waves by huge and high winds, the waters below are never stirred. The Christian's mind can be protected against the distracting waves of worry if it is resting completely in the good providence of God. There, sheltered by His grace and encouraged by His Holy Spirit, the believer can find the perfect tranquility that only Christ can provide. Let us all stop worrying today and place ourselves in the cushion of the world's stormy seas. 
Amen. Thank you, Roy, for sharing that inspiring message. And thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about us or share with friends, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow at the same time. Ronnie Mills will be back with exciting Hope Channel testimonies. We will talk about positive connections and we will share a moving morning devotional. Plus, we will have a special celebration going on. If you enjoyed our devotional thought today, please visit hope.study for your free Bible study guides. And it's now time for our daily Bible promise. Today's promise says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. In this verse lies an, an amazing promise, a promise to you and I that we don't have to be subject to anything that enslaves us. We can be free from addictions, from depression, from the emotional ups and downs, and anything else that seeks to take away our self-control. So whatever struggles you have today, take heart, my friends, and cling to Jesus and claim His promise of freedom. Amen. Friends, we enjoyed our time together today, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, today, Lord, we enter this day not on our own strength, not with our own self-determination to have a good day, but Lord, our dependence is upon you. We want to seek you and find you every moment of every day, especially as we begin this new day that you have given us. So thank you, Lord, for being so faithful. We love you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.